Good morning, students. Today we are going to see chapter number three, that is classification of elements and periodicity in properties. Till now we have completed first two chapters, that is basic concepts of chemistry and structure of atom. See, this chapter is going to involve uh, more about a lot about the periodic table elements. Hope you all remember about the periodic table elements which we have seen in the live session. We have tried, we tried to remember some of the periodic table elements using mnemonics. Now let's move on to chapter 3. How to classify the elements and what is their properties. Okay. Now when you look into the periodic table, we saw a large number of elements which are placed in uh, sleeping line as well as in standing line. That is, they were placed in rows as well as in columns. Now, before the approval of this final periodic table, uh, two more scientists tried to frame a periodic table. The first scientist is Doberiner. His law is Doberiner's law of trials. What is the first law? Doberiner's law of trials. What does this law suggest? He tried to group the elements into three such that how he arranged the elements into three he arranged them in the order of increasing atomic masses how he arranged the elements he arranged the elements in terms of increasing atomic masses so what is Doberiner's law he grouped the elements into three hence the name trials okay he grouped three three elements into one group and how he arranged them? He arranged them in the order of increasing atomic masses. But this is not so. So this law was not approved. Moving to the second law that is Newland's law of octaves. From the name I am getting a clue. He has grouped the elements into eight. Okay. And you know here the elements are grouped in such a way such that they are arranged in increasing order of their atomic weight. So what is the difference between law of triads and law of octaves? Here they are arranged in increasing atomic mass and here they are arranged in increasing atomic weight. And one more special feature of Newland's law of octaves is, see the first element and the eighth element shared the similar property. The first and the eighth element, they shared the similar properties. How our musical note prefer to have a similar note in first and eighth similarly. And okay, that's all. We, we have a quick recap on this page. Law of triads proposed by the scientist Doberiner. Law of octaves proposed by the scientist Newland. Here elements are grouped into three, increasing order of atomic mass. Here elements are grouped into eight, in increasing order of atomic weight. First and eighth element share the same chemical properties. Okay, the properties are similar. Now this is the table which shows you the Doberiner's law of triads where he has arranged the elements into three. And this is Newland's law of octaves where he has arranged the elements into eight. What is the special feature here? The first element and the eighth element will be sharing the same chemical property. Okay. Now the third scientist is Mendeleev's periodic table or Mendeleev's periodic law. What does this law suggest that? The properties of the elements or the periodic functions of their atomic weight. You have to reproduce the law exactly like what is proposed by the scientist. So what is Mendeleev suggesting? When I am looking into each element's property, it is similar to their atomic weight. Okay, The properties of, of the elements or the periodic function of their atomic number. This is Mendeleev's periodic law. Very important question. And you know Mendeleev, how he arranged the elements? He arranged the elements into sleeping line and standing line. That is horizontal rows and vertical columns. And you know this horizontal rows are called as periods. And vertical columns are otherwise called as groups or families. I am going to give you a small mnemonic. Horizontal row, it is called as period, right? So remember that as HP, our HP pencil. H for horizontal row and P for periods. And how to remember vertical columns? Vertical columns are otherwise called as groups. So, vergis. Okay, V E R G H E S. Take it as some name. So, vergis. Vertical columns are otherwise called as groups or families. You know, he placed the elements which share same property in the groups. 
when you look into each group each group will be having elements which are possessing similar properties that's how mendeleev arranged in the periodic table next see but you know scientist mendeleev he left some gap under silicon and aluminium and he called them that gaps as eka silicon and eka aluminium later it was discovered that eka aluminium's property is similar to gallium and eka silicon's property is similar to germanium he left gaps under silicon and aluminium eka silicon eka aluminium and they are closely related to gallium and germanium and uh, next came modern periodic law after mendeleev's periodic law modern periodic law came uh, came forth and what does modern periodic law suggest you have to remember only two aspects okay what is mendeleev's periodic law properties of the elements or the periodic functions of their atomic atomic weight and the properties of the elements or the periodic function of their atomic number is the modern periodic law here i specified properties and here it will be specified as physical and chemical property this is atomic weight and this is atomic number that's all so shall we repeat modern periodic law whenever i am repeating any law two or three times kindly repeat after me so that it is easy for you to remember so what is modern periodic law the physical and chemical properties of the elements or the periodic function of their atomic number who proposed modern periodic law scientist mosley so it is otherwise called as mosley's periodic law so it is otherwise called as mosley's periodic law and this is how they are arranged see children these are sleeping lines nothing but horizontal rows so remember hp horizontal rows are otherwise called as periods and these are standing lines means vertical columns vertical columns are otherwise called as groups or families okay now see the periodic law when you look into it revealed some difference among the naturally occurring elements there are 94 naturally occurring elements when we view the periodic table we found some differences what are they see um, neptunium and plutonium and like elements are actinium and proactinium they are also found in the pitch blend pitch blend is nothing but an ore of uranium what is ore ore is nothing but a mineral matter from which it's nothing but a rocky mineral matter from which the desired mineral can be extracted so what they say when we look into the periodic table we are able to find out some differences say for example uh, neptunium plutonium like actinium and proactinium they are also found in the pitch blend which is nothing but ore of uranium now whatever i told you what are periods and what are groups or families now periodic table for the sake of conveniency and for better understanding it is divided into four subdivisions periodic table is divided into four subdivision what are they s p d and f hope you all remember about the term s p d f which we have studied in chapter 2 so we are moving to the first subdivision of the periodic table s block elements s block is of two types group 1 which is alkali metal group 2 which is alkaline earth metals okay first point is clear so what are s block elements s block element i mean what are uh, yeah what are s block elements s block elements are subdivided into two categories they are group 1 and group 2 what are group 1 alkali metals what are group 2 alkaline earth metals now what is the electronic configuration of s block elements see when you look into alkali metals their electronic configuration is ns2 what is the electronic configuration ns2 and what is alkaline earth metals electronic configuration it should be where is the point children when you look into the outermost electronic configuration since this is s block elements this uh, i mean alkaline earth metals outer configuration should be ns2 alkali is ns1 and alkaline earth metal is ns2 clear so we have seen what is group 1 what is group 2 what is electronic configuration ns1 and ns2 clear now uh, what is the features or what are the characteristics of s block elements see when you look into the s block elements almost all are reactive metals they have their ionization enthalpy less i'll be dealing with all these definitions there are six definitions which will be uh, um, viewing in the upcoming slides 
So what are the features of S-block elements? S-block elements are reactive metals, first point, and they have low ionization enthalpy. Means they lose the outermost electrons readily so that they have plus one ion configuration in case of alkali and plus two configuration in case of alkaline earth metal. I can otherwise call them literally for remembrance. These are very, very generous fellows. S block elements are very generous fellows. Means what? S children, when I am when I say um, atom is neutral, when it is having positive ion and a negative ion which is present in equal number then I am going to call that as neutral. Say for example, what is positive ion otherwise called as? Positive ion is otherwise called as cation. Okay. What is positive electrode? Positive electrode is nothing but, okay, that I don't want to confuse you now. So what is positive ion? Cation. What is negative ion? Anion. Okay, till that it is clear. I have now positive ion and negative ion. Now, I can readily lose one of the electron. I can readily lose one of the electron. If I am going to lose one of the electron, then my balance of positive and negative charge is shifted. Now positive charge is predominant because its pair and negative charge is removed from me. So I become plus one. So who is having that configuration? Alkali metal. Now alkaline earth metals are still more generous than alkali metal. What they do? They lose two electrons readily from their outermost shell. If I'm going to lose two minus charges, then my two positive charges are predominant because they have lost their pair, so they are predominant. So I become plus two. That's it. Okay. So coming to the important features of alkaline metals, alkaline metals, their outermost configuration is NS1. Alkaline earth metals, outermost configuration is NS2. Alkali becomes plus one. Alkaline earth metal becomes plus two in the outermost configuration. Now, when you look into the metallic character and the reactivity, it increases as we go down the group and they are never found in nature. And in the first point only, I have told you they are highly reactive metals. Because of reactivity, it is very difficult to find your S-block elements in nature. And see, this alkali and alkaline earth metals, they have high negative electron gain enthalpy. So they readily add up one or two electrons respectively to attain this to able gas configuration. Okay, I forgot about, uh, I, I think I didn't explain this point, correct? Yeah. Oh, no, to P block. Yeah, children. Okay, th this is done. Okay, revision of S block elements. Is it clear for you? They are reactive metals, so they are never found in nature. Clear. Now, moving to the next classification, P block. We have seen S block. We saw what is their electronic configuration, how they become plus 1 and plus 2, how about them, how about their reactivity. They are so reactive whether they are found in nature or not. With that we have completed S block elements. Now moving to P block elements, the group of elements between group 13 to group 18 along with the S block elements are collectively called as representative elements or main group elements. So. In P block elements, that is 13 to 18, whatever the elements are present between group 13 to group 18, I, apart from this, I am going to include your S block 2, then this is collectively, these elements are collectively called as representative elements or main group elements. Okay. Now, what about their outermost electronic configuration? When we look at their outermost electronic configuration, it varies from NS2, NP1 to NS2, NP6. Okay. NS2, NP1 to NS2, NP6. Okay. Now, when you look into the end of each period, there will be a noble gas element with a closed valence shell as NS2, NP6 configuration. So, whenever I think of noble gas, I have to remember three aspects of them. They are inert elements. Noble gas elements are otherwise called as inert elements. Means what? They never react. And they have octet configuration. These are the three important points about noble gas. Hope you all remember about noble gas. Uh, what was the mnemonic sentence used for noble gas? Hina, Nina, Aur, Karina, Ka, X-ray, Rangin. Means helium, neon, organ, krypton, xenon, radon. So these are noble gas elements. What is the special feature? They have octet configuration, means their configuration will be NS2 and P6. 6 plus 2 is 8 configuration. They have completely filled S orbital and P orbital. 
when they are completely filled they no need to react why there is a reaction happening because there is a deficiency of electron or there is an excess of electron an atom want to attain its stable configuration by losing out electron or gaining electron it is already satisfied with octet configuration so there is no necessity for a noble gas for a reaction it does not react that's why they are called as inert gas elements so at the end of each element of p block elements i have noble gas configuration i mean i have noble gas whose configuration is ns2 and np6 now when you look into valence shell orbitals outermost shell it's all completely filled so it's very difficult to alter the noble gas arrangement whether to add electrons or to remove electrons from noble gas it's found to be very difficult why because they are in stable configuration they no need to react then then when you look into the reactivity of noble gas as i told you they never react so when you look into the chemical reactivity it's very low they exhibit very low chemical reactivity when you move to the noble gas family we have two important uh, important group of non metals they are called as halogens and chalcogens when we move from noble gas configuration we have two important class of elements they are called as halogens or chalcogens what is the feature of halogens and chalcogens that is halogen belong to group 17 while chalcogens belong to group 16 so what is the important feature of this they have high negative ege ege is electron gain enthalpy okay ege is electron gain enthalpy i hope you all remember the difference between um, enthalpy and entropy entropy is nothing but absorbing heat from the surrounding so surrounding will be cool enthalpy is liberating heat into the surrounding making the surroundings temperature high so we have to remember entropy absorption of heat energy enthalpy liberation of heat energy what is ege that is electron gain enthalpy who is exhibiting this feature children our halogens and chalcogens exhibit an important feature that is they have high negative ege and what is this ege they can readily add up one or more electrons so that they will be attaining the noble gas configuration okay clear so we have seen under s block elements why s block elements are otherwise called as representative elements that means group 13 to 18 along with s block are collectively called as representative elements what is their outermost configuration that you have to remember then what is the preceding element of your p block elements they are nothing but noble gas configuration and about the noble gas we have to discuss and preceding the noble gas you have to discuss about halogens and the chalcogens and what is the special feature of halogens and the chalcogens they have negative ege they add up one or more electrons to attain stable gas configuration moving to d block elements see elements in which d orbital is completely filled they are going to we are going to call them as d block elements so what are d block elements elements in which your d orbital is completely filled i am going to call them as d block elements simultaneously if you discuss about f block elements what can you say for f block elements elements in which f orbital is completely filled i am going to call them as f block elements that clear and what is the general configuration n minus 1 d 1 to 10 ns 1 to 2 okay what is the electronic configuration n minus 1 d 1 to 10 ns 1 to 2 and what is the important property for d block elements you know they exhibit catalytic property they form colored ions this is an important characteristic feature of d block elements is they form colored ion where is that point yeah they form colored ions they form big big complexes say for example cf minus 6 a carbon where six fluorine ions are linked to it sf6 like that they form big complexes and they form colored ions and they show paramagnetic properties they show catalytic properties and your d block elements are otherwise called as transition metals why they are called as transition metals because Uh, they are placed between metals and non metals how are they placed children they are they are placed between your metals and non metals so your d block elements are otherwise called as transition elements 
so your f block element should be otherwise called as inner transition metals so clear so i have discussed two points on f block elements elements in which d orbital is completely filled is d block elements and d block elements are otherwise called as inner transition metals now what is the electronic configuration electronic configuration is ns2 n minus 1 d 0 to 1 n minus 2 f 1 to 10 okay they are otherwise called as inner transition metals okay now when you look into the normal state they have incomplete d orbital electronic configuration as well as in the oxidation state the or a special feature about f block elements is they are radioactive elements okay f block elements are radioactive elements now these are the definitions which we have to discuss uh, i'll be discussing uh, the first three definitions here atomic radius ionic radius ionization enthalpy electron gain enthalpy electron negativity oxidation state and chemical reactivity we'll discuss the first th uh, three definitions now atomic radius the name itself is giving me the definition the radius of an atom is called as atomic radius now when you see the size of the atom atomic size decreases across the period up to second period why because the outer electrons are in the same valence shell and the nuclear charge increases as atomic number increases okay clear i'll be explaining this see we know the radius of an atom is called as atomic radius and what happens to the atomic size your atomic size decreases what happens to the atomics this is atomic number actually this is atomic radius the atomic size decreases till period 2 till period 2 my atomic size is going to decrease why because when I see the outermost electron the outermost electron are also in the same valence shell and the nuclear charge of the atom increases as the atomic number increases so nuclear charge increases when atoms number is increases when atomic number increases nuclear charge too increases and because of this there is an increased attraction between nucleus and electron the central nucleus is possessing positive and negative charge it's a neutral thing the positively charged nucleus shows more attraction towards electrons which are present in the outermost shell when this happens this happens when atomic number increases when atomic number increases i am going to fill the electrons as per the orbital okay as per the orbitals and the shells the attraction between the center nucleus and the outermost electron increases now the atomic radius decreases from left to right as the quantum number increases so when principal quantum number increases then atomic radius decreases atomic radius decreases when it decreases when principal quantum number increases not only that when the number of shell increases then also your atomic radius increases so let me sum up the atomic radius when you look into the size of the atom the size of the atom decreases till period number two why because here the outermost electrons are in the same valence shell and effective nuclear charge increases when atomic number increases now when principal quantum number increases atomic radius decreases and when number of shells increases then atomic radius decreases because of these factors there is an increased attraction between nuclei and the electrons okay now moving to variation of atomic size in that of alkali metals and this is ionic radius okay we have discussed about this but uh, let me sum up the important aspects when i remove an electron from an atom it occurs positive charge so it is cation when i remove a proton from an atom then negative charge predominates i am going to call that as anion okay it's clear i have positive and negative charge equally when electron is removed i become positive when proton is removed i become negative when i am positive i am called cation when i am negative i am called anion okay clear now when you look into the size of the cation the size of the cation is smaller than the parent atom and when you look into the size of anion anion size is more than that of the parent atom why is that we are going to discuss so what is the statement 
the size of the cation is smaller than the parent atom and the size of the anion is greater than the parent atom why now i told you in the previous slide there is an attraction between the positively charged nuclei and the electron which is present in the valence shell so there is an attraction between these two and there is an repulsion between the electron and the electron which are revolving around the nucleus there is electron electron repulsion too happening in the outermost electrons now what are isoelectronic species which we have discussed in chapter 2 isoelectronic species or species which have same number of electron they have same structure they have same number of valence electron they have same number of atoms these are isoelectronic species when you see the cation whose charge is higher they have smaller radius why a cation having large positive charge is having smaller nucleus when the size decreases this is an atom or this is a cation cation means what it has given out it has given out electron so it's a cation its positive charge is more means what it has given out more number of electrons so it has gained more positive charge now when i look into the atomic size or ionic size the ionic size is smaller why because there is an attraction between the nuclei and the outermost electron so your electrons are pulled towards nuclei so the size shrinks the size size is constricted or constant it is constricted now what is the contrary an anion which has large negative charge has expanded its size i'm repeating how i become an anion when i give out more negative when i give out more positive charge i become i think i'm uh, no first aspect is clear i am an atom i have given out electron so i become cation i i attain a positive charge because because of that i i'm i'm giving out more number of electron so more the positive charge for a cation so in that case attraction between nuclei and the outermost electron happens so the size is smaller now i am an atom i have lost protons so i became more negative i have lost more number of protons so i became more positive charge in case of more positive charge the size is more why because the electron electron repulsion is going to happen as a result they are expanding in size they are trying to occupy the orbitals next next orbitals so they are expanded in size this is what is given in the paragraph i'll just help you out anion with greater negative charge will have large radius why because net repulsion of the electrons will outweigh the nuclear charge and the ion will expand in size okay children clear very simple aspect when you go through once you'll get a clear idea and ionization enthalpy what is ionization enthalpy tendency of an element to lose an electron is given by ionization enthalpy okay when uh, sodium chloride ionizes to give na plus and cl minus so tendency of any element to give out an electron is given by ionization enthalpy ionization enthalpy is always positive because some amount of energy is required for an element to remove to remove an electron from an atom you need some amount of energy so ionization enthalpy is always positive now let me be specific in the definition okay the amount of energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom in its ground state is quantitatively termed as ionization enthalpy shall i repeat so amount of energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom in its ground state is defined as ionization enthalpy i told you it holds a positive charge and it is expressed in terms of kilojoules per mole kj per mole suppose uh, the energy required to remove first electron from an atom in the ground state is first ionization enthalpy the amount of energy required to remove the second electron from a positive ion is more than the first ionization enthalpy i am a neutral atom some amount of energy is required to remove an electron from me i become positive ion when i become a positive ion the amount of energy required to remove an electron from me will be more compared to 
first ionization enthalpy similarly amount of energy required to remove a third electron from a positive ion is still more higher than the second ionization enthalpy and it goes like that so first ionization enthalpy is less value second ionization enthalpy is more compared to first third ionization enthalpy is still higher than the second it goes like that because more energy is required to remove the second electron when it has attained that ionic state so let me help out this the ionization <coughs> enthalpy is required is expressed in units kilojoules per mole so we can define the second ionization enthalpy as the energy required to remove the second electron from the loosely bound electron so energy is always required so ionization enthalpy is always positive and second ionization enthalpy is higher than the first ionization enthalpy because difficult to remove an electron from a positively charged ion than from the neutral atom okay children so these are uh, uh, three points i have told you already about the third ionization enthalpy and the fourth ionization how it keeps on increasing all these aspects we have seen this point i have to explain see we have for noble gas configuration that is closed electronic configuration the ionization enthalpy is maximum because they have stable electronic configuration then who possesses minimal egi who possesses minimum um, ionization enthalpy that is your alkali metals alkali metals possess low ionization enthalpy while noble gases possess high ionization enthalpy why because you can correlate the low ionization enthalpy of an alkali metal with the reactivity we have we have discussed about this why they are highly reactive because their ionization enthalpy is very very less okay ah uh, yeah so all uh, from the shielding effect we can discuss in the next session children so kindly go through the chapter if you find any uh, drawbacks in understanding any of the aspects okay Uh, we will be discussing that in the live session kindly go through all the definitions clearly and about the laws we need to look into few more definitions in the next session thank you children